ladies and gentlemen, welcome over to our fourth Rumble in the Realm. Currently, we are going to be looking at the European player base for 1v1 tournaments. I will be your host today, Gummy, and here casting with me will be my good friend, Hank. How are you doing, friend? Oh, doing great, doing great. All right, good to hear that. I hope you guys are all ready for some awesome PvP matches. So if you guys aren't uh, up to date, this last weekend we spent some time in Europe and as well as in NA uh, having a qualifier tournament through Legion Esports. And through that tournament, we have decided the top four players from each of these regions, and they will be competing here today in order to see who will be walking away with some lovely, lovely prizing. So we have Chloroform versus Zay, which will be our first match. And then next up, we will have Mr. Do versus Kelly QQ. And these guys will be participating for some awesome prizes sponsored over here by Corsair. But we can get that brought up on the screen for you as well. But for first place, we have 300 USD and a choice of one of the following costumes, school days, teacher's pet, and colorful silks. All of them very nice and reasonable fashion choices. They also get the Corsair K70 Lux RGB Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. Second place will get 200 USD, choice of the same outfits, along with a Corsair Scimitar Pro RGB Optical MOBA MMO Gaming Mouse and Corsair and then 3000 Extended Mouse Pad. Third place will also get 100 USD, with the same outfit with a Corsair Void Pro RGB USB Premium Gaming Headset. And fourth place will be receiving $50 in Hog Moon Coin along with one of those outfits as well. So nice prices all around. Um, obviously, first was going to be able to yield the most, and all these players are going to be trying as much as they possibly can. So out of all these players, which one do you think you're going to be rooting for the most, Hank? Uh, honestly, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this, but I think Kelly QQ saw him yesterday. It looks, I mean, everyone hates the summoner because he does good uh, things, but uh, I was going to say, you're rooting for the summoner. I'm for... rooting for the wrong class. I'm really... <laughs> going to get berated. No, but I honestly think I like the way he plays. It doesn't look mm -hmm. disgusting, as a lot of people say, but it's fun to watch. You'll see. I hope he gives us something impressive. Yeah, we'll see how it's going to be going. Unfortunately, he is going to have to be playing in that destroyer matchup for his initial start, which is one that a lot of summoners seem to tend to dread a lot of the time. But before we do start getting underway, I'm going to remind you guys all what the bracket is like here. So we're going to be playing through the tournament client for BNS. So we're going to be end up having multiple rounds. We're going to have two of three rounds for all of the initial matches. But by the time we get to grand finals, we'll have the best of three matches. So it'll be like a normal spar system, so that we're going to have to load in a couple more times than usual but you guys will be able to see a whole lot more in much better detail so hopefully you guys are all prepared and ready for that so i guess we can start getting started with our first match of the day which will be zay versus chloroform so we're going to be watching blade master versus fm so typically how do you think this matchup really plays out hank uh typically i think force master kind of has the advantage i mean you're the blade master. You can tell me more about this. Than <laughs> oh, I, can, I have a lot to say about this match. Oh, yeah? yeah. So the the really big thing is that um, typically I'd say blade master it, it can have a pretty good run in against force master a lot of the time. You know, of course things like frost orbits are kind of hard to deal with. You're always having to play around the fact that you don't have approach skills. You're always movement disabled. They also have multiple guard breaks, but the really big thing is that your SS is on a nine second cooldown to remove those approach disables, which is pretty nice. And you also have ways to escape out of grip, obviously. You have your uh, flock of blades and you, of course, have your normal tab escape. So it's just about a matter of whether you can get those good and precise timings. But of course, then we can always think about, well, FM on the other hand has things like untappable combos, which is really big. You know, we have things like with the wall bang, you can do a lot of damage. Of course, you can go up to aerial damage as well if you really want to find that combo efficiency. So I really think it's going to come down to whether or not these players are landing the critical cooldowns that they're really going to be needing. So big things to watch out for is how is the Blade Master going to be using their flock? How is their Z pull going to be used? Are they landing it? Are they comboing off with it? And then Force Master. You know, are they going for wall bang damage? Are they getting chip damage? Are they using their eyes properly? Did Divine Veil block the v block the Z pull? Does um do they make sure that their Phantom Grip always, you know, gets the right proc? Are they getting their combos off? Does Phantom Grip always land? Is there a lot of questions that these players always have to be asking themselves? And a lot of it will come down to seeing how the initial opener also plays out. All right, so hopefully we're going to be getting started with those in just a little bit. Uh, so as for 
we can go over and go ahead and talk about Mr. Do and uh, Kelly as well. So why is it that you choose to root for Kelly so much? Uh, I don't know. It's just uh, seemingly what he does. He seems to mix things up if uh, things aren't going the right way. Uh, as a summoner, you know, you tend to think there's not much you can do in terms of the mix-up, but I've seen him change between the earth and the wind. His play style is of aggressive and passive. Uh, in this matchup, I don't think it's very hopeful. Uh, previously, Mr. Dute did get pretty clean victories off Kelly QQ, so mm -hmm. kind of pessimistic about this. Uh, yeah. Destroyers having Ember Stomp and the Red Spin and their choice of either Fury or... Uh, and the blue buff escape mm -hmm. it's just a big kit to deal with well kelly qq you know you have probably your spin disable as your biggest advantage yeah of course you know that's the really big thing is we're gonna have to see how he does choose to play that the other big question is if whether or not mr dude's gonna be running things like the red buff or the blue buff in that match afterwards as well just for uh just because they can really kind of go with either build, you know, if you want to be a little more safe, the blue's okay. But of course, Fury can really just end the match almost out of nowhere just because Summoner is such a squishy class. And of course, Red Buff going in on the Summoner would be dealing quite a bit of damage, especially if you can force out their trinket early, pull them out of stealth with something like a vacuum of that sort. So it can really kind of top either way for the most part. But with that, so our original matchup will, of course, be Zay, though, versus Chloroform. So the BM versus the Force Master. Hopefully both the players are getting just about ready, and we can start getting onwards with these matches. Also, guys, if you don't recall either, one thing I can bring up, too, is that to, uh, later today, we will actually have the NA 1v1 finals for Rumble in the Realm as well, and those will be at approximately 4 p.m. PST. And of course, there is also going to be 3v3 matches that you can remember as well, and there will be qualifiers for those on December 2nd and 3rd on finals along on the 4th. So more stuff to really be looking forward to. So it looks like both of the players are hopefully now getting ready and we can get started in just a brief moment. Uh, so as for the matches yesterday, though, Hank, and uh, I guess on Saturday as well for EU, how do you really uh, think of these players' sort of play styles? I think, uh, I think they're all exciting in their own way. Uh, Chloroform, he plays very, very safe, and that allows him to be very aggressive at mm -hmm. times. Might be a bit more frustrating for Zay, uh, but at the same time, might benefit him as the Blade Master. He gets, you know, one minute cooldowns, of course. But since yeah. the Force Master is trying to stall out his own cooldowns, might just help him in his own way. But of course, you do have to deal with a lot of defense piercing and the grips and the untappable wall banks. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of uh, positioning, I assume, is going to be a big thing in this match. Uh, most definitely. You know, there's a lot to really kind of consider and really take in if you really want to try to come out on this uh, on top of all of this but it looks like the matches are finally getting prepared and we are loaded and in underway here we have chloroform on the blue side and zay over here on the red side so here we go guys our first match for rumble in the realm finals here in eu let's see how it's all going to be able to get played out right now zay trying to go in for that initial opener but the ice flower is going to be keeping chloroform safe does manage to land out the flicker stun into the lightning draw as well and that frost first on chloroform not going to quite connect as he would hope he's getting a lot of damage here off of this wall effect as well the tab escape out from they will be keeping him safe as well the boot to knock his opponent down to the floor into the ankle biter trying to get that extension as well but sadly will drop it block the plays does allow him to escape out of that phantom grip as well and the z pull coming back in here from zay ice flower keeping chloroform alive though knocked down to the floor by the boot Builder's charge thrown right on into the frost prison and chloroform trying to get some more space in here so he can avoid all of this damage that keeps coming on in Tab escape out from Chloroform will be able to keep him alive though. Pushing his opponent back now. Does throw out that glacial beam as well. Bring back for the impact even more. And the tab escape does return here for Zay. Not trying to go back in on his opponent, but he is stuck in the Phantom Grip and no way to escape anymore. Chloroform might be able to just clean it out here with a clean combo. Let's go up with the Dragon Charge. Still pushing the opponent up against the wall. And the dual dragons will finish him off. I mean, as expected, Chloroform played his untappable damage, mm -hmm. very safe damage.
but at the same time, stalling his cooldowns. You notice he did not have his escapes up at the very end, but yeah. he just kept aggressive. Saw that uh, Zay used his escapes and just kept mm -hmm. on going with his combo. You know, that's the really big thing I always see in here is just the fact that when we are looking over at it is that when the Force Master is playing around and the BM is always having to blow their cooldowns, we saw him have to use his tab against the wall twice there, which was kind of unfortunate because he's eating so much free damage. And then he ended up getting hit by the grip as well. And then he used his flock to escape out of that. The fact that the next grip did get to go off and his tab escape just wasn't there just means that Chloro gets really just free reign to actually deal as much damage as possible. But of course, Zay isn't quite out yet. He still does have a chance to turn this around as he has one more round. So really, what do you think Zay needs to try to do in order to really swap this map uh, matchup on its head? It's kind of hard to say. He did get a pretty good combo off with the knockdowns, tech chases, and he just kept falling through. I think the difficulty, of course, is just dealing with the uh, Force Master escapes. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't exactly uh, properly deal with the SS, which is a great time for a BM to punish since mm -hmm. the snare effect enables him to use his next charge skills. He just has to position himself for targeting. Uh, if anything, he might actually just want to center himself better. Staying so close to the wall is just asking mm -hmm. to get punished by any dragon world yes. impact. Of course, but it does look like we are starting to go a bit more underway as well into our next match in just a moment. So we'll be getting that up on the screen. Here we go. The countdown has finally begun. We are proceeding underway with our next match. We'll see if Chloroform is going to be able to take it here with a 2-0 victory over Zay or if it will be turned on its head. Looks like the Frost Tornado is not going to be able to get the connection in on that block, but the HM block from Zay will be keeping safe. Sun is coming out as well. We do see this flicker coming into the five-point strike to get more aerial damage. Chloroform already dropped down to about half HP. Nicely done here by Zay to be able to get all this damage in early, but right here we see the Frost Prison out of Chloroform to be able to heal him up. The Dragon Shard will knock his opponent back to fall by the Glacial Beam as well. Zay managing to avoid out that Banner Grip, but unfortunately is hit here by the Frost Burst. Now stuck in a stun lock combo, actually gets the escape out of that. Flash Staff in order to proc out that Ice Slider and goes for the Flock of Blades aggression. But right now, Zay's really having a hard time to get back in against his opponent. No escapes available either. Floorform gets out here and manages to get the connection in onto Zay. Good, really spell disaster. Lock is also down. Zay still has the opportunity to just get a Phantom Drip, and it could end it pretty early. Gets the air combo off. Tries to get the flicker in tech chase. Misses it. Gets the knockdown. CI frame used. Impact. Frost turn not exactly breaking. It stuns in going for the impact inferno damage wall and then his tab escape is used hits into the ice flower chloroform's prosperous didn't quite go off gets the knockdown again oh but the tab escape used followed up by dragon world and we're just getting see this large aerial damage just going in yeah, is this just, over yeah there's just so much coming out zay just no escapes actually avoids really? the fanning up here with his ss as well Nicely yeah. done. He actually finishes it off with the meteor showers here. And Chloroform will take our first victory for the day here in Rumble in the Realm 4. Uh, it's pretty lucky uh, for Zay at the end to avoid that Phantom Grip. Unfortunately, just did not have enough skills up to uh, mm -hmm. follow through on that. Yeah, definitely really rough there for Zay. So unfortunately for him, though, that means he will be proceeding down to the loser side of the bracket as Chloroform starts to inch up a little more forward toward where he really uh, wants to be, which is, of course, that first place prize that everyone wants. Who doesn't want the nice looking uh, gold trophy on their name? But yeah, for Zay, he's kind of having a hard time. You know, the engages against the Force Master are somewhat difficult to get. You know, you're having to play around things like eyes. The Vine Veil, even Impact to uh, an extent, obviously, with your approach skills. It's really hard to kind of play around. So Chloroform really staying on top of his A game in order to uh, really show that he's going to try to dominate the tournament here today. But with that, that means we're going over to Mr. Do and Kelly QQ for our next game today. <laughs> their uh, previous match, Mr. Do was kind of just walking all over Ke Kelly QQ, you know. When a Destroyer starts the combo, they have Ember Stomp off. The mm -hmm. Summon doesn't really have a choice besides use their escape. Their uh, beckon won't really do anything from there. Yeah. It's just a matter of just, is he going to get caught by that simple uh, mechanic or mm -hmm. will he be able to play around it? Yeah, it's going to be the really big thing is, 
whether Kelly can really come out on top of this matchup, you know, I, I think it's not exactly a secret, but a lot of people think that this is usually a pretty destroyer favored matchup for the most part. But we'll see if Kelly QQ can try to play against that upward momentum that is all against him and whether or not he's going to be able to try and turn this around for himself here. Alrighty, Hank. So it looks like we're going to be loading into the match in just a moment. I'll go ahead and let you take the wheel here. Get a, get a cast my uh, my fave and hopefully eat my words, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that's going to go. Hopefully oh, Kelly QQ can... Uh, back you up with your support fingers crossed <laughs> sounds like they're uh playing around the specs making sure nothing last minute's gonna go wonky of course we don't want any sort of issues with each of the competitors we want this matchup to be as fair as humanly possible for everyone around So just a brief reminder, too, about the matchup. So we were talking about how Destroyer kind of has a lot of options, and Summoner tends to have sort of a rough time to really engage against the Destroyer. You know, if the Destroyer is choosing to run blue buff as well, your CCs don't really get to land as much as you'd hopefully like. You obviously have to KD the Destroyer before you can use any sort of hard CCs like the Cat Hammer or the Penta Slash as well, or you have to negate the spin with Root. So we'll see if Kelly can do that here for us. Go ahead and take it away, my friend. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. Just running off to the corner mat, trying to get the safe engage. Roots go straight for it. Tab leap used. Then he goes for the ram. Knockdown instantly. Tech chase did not follow up on Mr. Dude's side. This is a pretty good situation with the. Oh, now instantly caught with the shield stun. Mighty cleave on the floor. Tab escape already used for both sides. As both escapes are used for Mr. Dude. He does need to get away. This is a pretty bad situation. And then he's just gonna get the free deflect damage. The tab will the blitz will keep ping stalled. Red spinning just cutting in for time. Gets the stun on the summoner and the cat. This is a bad situation. Just kill is just need eating damage. Gets just backing off, but not really anything to escape from the red spin. Yeah, it's so rough here for Kelly. You know, he had to use his escape so early on, and the red spin catching him out immediately afterwards means this game is going to end much sooner than he would hopefully expect to. Of course, uh, Mr. Duke making sure that he has full control over his opponent. And the matchup really is rough. Kelly needs to really figure out that opener right there. Because if they're getting caught out, having to blow the type escape so early, Destroyer has so many tools in order to deal with both the cat and the summoner itself. Yes, especially since uh, Destroyer would not only do they have low cooldown uh, CCs, but they're also, mm. they tend to be AoE too. So if the cat isn't managed as well, like if he's not uh, cat crouching it as often, mm -hmm. he's not going to get that available back and or even like ankle biter from the side. Yeah, exactly. So that's the really big thing we saw right there. The red spin just dealt so much damage, was stunning both targets. You can even look at cooldowns like vacuum or axe sweep. Uh, both of those deal reason to have you know, AOE CC, which can also affect the cat, which is a really big thing to keep in mind. So the summoner can kind of struggle with that. We'll see if Kelly does have a new strategy idea in mind though, to really try and end out the match maybe a bit better. You know, if he can manage to escape out early on and not get caught out so soon, maybe his healing and sustain can keep him up in the match. But of course, it is a bit difficult when uh, looking at such a skewed matchup in some ways and Kelly really having to bring out their A-game if they want to try to win this for themselves. Yeah, it's also uh, perhaps unfortunate unfortunate that uh, the Mr. Dude is uh, opting for the blue buff. So he, is, he does want the uh, second escape, but at the same time, yeah. he's keeping Stone Shield just for a large... That's a three-second PC with AoE. Yeah. He doesn't really need the healing. He just wants to be able to catch this guy. He's pretty much assuming he does not need oh, yeah. damage from Fury. Yeah, he pretty much just really wants to try to go for the kill, but always have that safe option in case he really needs to kind of pull back on his play style. But here we go, guys, into our next round for the Rumble in the round. We'll see if Kelly Kiku can try to turn it around. Looks like the immediate opener with the blue buff out here from Mr. Dude, actually. But he's going to miss on that tech chase and hits into the dandelion, unfortunately. HM Root is waiting off to the side here as well. Cat is here trying to save its opener, but Kelly is just taking so much damage. And right there, the free dandelion proc out from Kelly. Really nicely done. Does manage to get out the cat pin as well. Mr. Dude here is stuck with no escapes whatsoever and dropped immediately down to 20% HP. But once again, this red spin is doing all of the work that it needs to back in oh. onto Kelly. 
you, Mr. B, who was at 9% HP, turns the matchup right back on its head and puts Kelly down to the floor, unfortunately, and knocks them to the loser's bracket with Zay. Yeah, I mean, just unfortunate. Uh, Mr. Dude saw that uh, Kelly used his true friend, used his uh, SS. Can't really get out of red spin besides those two options. Even if yeah. you use Beck and it'll stall for maybe a second and you're immediately going to get stunned again. Given not only yourself, you're losing your uh, second escape, which is yeah. not necessary, but you also get focus to destroy it because your uh, Beckon does inflict a hit. Mm -hmm. That was the really big thing. I also like the plays there near the end that Kelly also brought out when, you know, Mr. Dude was on the ground. He didn't have ground counters or anything. He actually intentionally hit into the destroyer ground counter, which is a really big thing. And then we saw him place up the dandelion. So he gets that free sunflower damage, which is really big. And then he gets the re KD into the pin, which was absolutely massive to deal so much to his opponent. But of course, for Mr. Dude got out of that, he just executed his combo really nice. They managed to CC out his opponent. And even at 9% HP, was able to turn the match back into his favor. So that means we're going to be proceeding forward with Mr. Dude. He will be up against Chloroform for his next matchup. But down there, we do see Zay and Kelly QQ as well. So that means whoever loses that match between those two will be getting that fourth place prize. And of course, nobody wants to go out on bottom here. So they're gonna be given all they can in order to try to win out their next game. Yeah, and I believe our uh, next matchup, we're actually going to go from the loser's bracket. Uh, okay. the blue side, Kelly Kiku in the red side. Uh, Summoner versus Blade Master. What do you think about this, Gummy? Uh, so Summoner versus BM, you know, there, I find that there's a lot of controversy behind this matchup. Some people tend to say it's BM favored. Some people tend to say it's also Summoner favored instead. Um, I'm not really going to take a side for it. I don't think it's really right to. But the big thing is that... It's important to know that I think a lot of the important choices are made really, really early on in the matchup. You know, the thing that we see really big here is how the initial opener is going to get played from both sides. You know, Blade Master has its options and choices. It has things like LMB, RMB stun. It also has Z pull. And it can use things like Shoulder Charge and Raid if it really wants to come out with a somewhat cheesy, easier opener if they're not using something like the iframe Shoulder Charge instead. Uh, but then the, the thing is, is, if the summoner can get the initial opener, they can really easily force out something like Flock of Blades or the Tab Escape from the Blade Master if they're playing it right. You know, they can keep the CCs, don't get pain, and maybe force the BM1 a Tab so because they're taking so much damage early on or force the Flock if they do go for the early pin. So it, it really can kind of depend on that and whether Kelly is going to be avoiding those big cooldowns like Z and Lightning Draw with their... Uh, True Friend, you know, Beckon, Petal Storm as well. There's a lot of choices really for them here. So hopefully we'll see a good match and we'll see who's going to be able to proceed forward in this next game. I think both of them have also loaded in and I'll go ahead and let you take the wheel here, Hank. All right, I think we still have just maybe a little time. Uh, match is about to start. I think Zay and uh, Kelly Q did have previous matches. Kelly mm -hmm. QQ coming on top. Mm hmm. Yeah. Interesting thing, Kelly Kiku did switch between Earth and uh, Wind Build a few times. Uh, I guess the difference, Wind Build getting priority in aerial damage. Mm -hmm. build, getting getting that Cat Pounce damage a lot better. Uh, I guess it also depends on how the Blade Master uses Flock. So he, Zay may decide to opt to save it for uh, Cat Pounce. May use it offensively. Uh, rather difficult, I think, for Zay, especially since he's already lost this matchup uh, the other day. So he has to really be on top of his game. Uh, yeah, he definitely needs to fix the mistakes he was making yesterday. You did mention that wind build too, which you don't see too often, but it's actually, I don't think it's all too bad, especially if you want to try to surprise your enemy a bit more. You know, you can use that. You can get the free aerial, and then you just get so much damage off of bees. There has sometimes been a tendency to even sometimes run the blue petal storm to get that extra bee damage and aerial damage, which... Uh, maybe could be brought out as well, but of course the defensive option can be nice too. All right, without further ado, let's start our loser's bracket. It's Jay just going for the ankle bar, tries to get the lightning stun, but didn't quite get it. Kelly gets the back roll, uses a dandelion, rush stun, gets the uh, searing strike, on moon block already used, have escape already used, tries to get dragon tongue damage in. Kelly Q may have a large chunk of damage, but his escapes are still up. Meanwhile, Zay only has his flock left. 
hasn't really done much. The cat's just kind of just kind of harassing him, not really doing any damage. Yeah, right here we can see Zay did use the second wind already. If Kelly can get an engage here, it could be really big damage come back for them. Kelly might have been hit down pretty low, but can definitely heal back all this damage that he has taken so far. But right here we see the raid up into the take flight for the aerial. So the charge coming in for a little bit of extra damage as well. And Zay playing really smooth here with all of these traits as well. Let's get checked taste out there by the Thorn Strike, but gets knocked down by the Sprout as well. We see Briar Patch down here on the field and knocked down by the Cat's Ankle Biter. And Kelly choosing not to use the Cat Pounce there, actually. Just going to back case. off, buy himself some time. I suppose he just did not wish to use Cat Pounce, waiting for Zay to actually waste his own flock. Just going to play the long game using the Petal Storm to heal a little. Cat Pounce, he's terrified of what CC comes to. Oh, it immediately hits into the Dandelion. So cute, just backing away, searing slash, getting him out of stealth, backing you, disabling charge and defense. But this is where you can just get free damage on Zay. He's gonna have to opt to use his escape. Hong yes. Moonzi throwing a true friend and the pedal storm. It's unfortunate. Guard break didn't quite get off of the cyclone. Talents finally used and flock you. They guess the aerial. Perhaps can just chunk down the issue, but the escape is still on Kel QQ. Opts to use the cat switch instead. It's into the stealth again, unfortunate. Yeah, right there. We saw the party dandelion get procced, and that's really bad there for Zay. But Kelly Kiku actually uses their tab escape. But in just time, he lands the thorn strike in order to finish out the victory. And Kelly QQ is going to take the first round here over Zay. So Zay, uh, things are looking kind of grim for him right now. You know, a uh, 2-0 victory over on him from Chloroform. And now down here, it's Kelly QQ. Really don't want to go out, you know, only... Uh, just have lost all of your matches. That would be really unfortunate to be fourth and not get a victory yet on the table either way. So hopefully he's going to be able to pull back. But we did see there he had a re pretty reasonable lead, right? Like it was definitely pretty good for the most part. But what do you think really made him lose that there? I think he just got rather uh, impatient. He saw that uh, Kelly QQ, you know, he's on low HP. I'm going to run a little. And that's not exactly being patient, just waiting for your cooldown. He has to realize when they come back, he can't just... Throw. He's given uh, Kelly Q just far too many free stealths off the dandelion, mm -hmm. especially when he shouldn't have. And it's just, it's going to be very punishable, especially when uh, Blade Masters aren't known for their very fast charge skills. There's nothing instant besides maybe shoulder charge. Yeah, but we see he's using the iframe there instead, of course. Mm -hmm. That is the really big thing. The approach shoulder charge can be used to kind of surprise your opponent. It is rather quick, as you said. And it does have a lower cooldown, but then you miss out on that extra iframe. You know, if you're stuck in a root and you don't have SS, you really can end up eating a lot more damage than you'd like. So who knows? Maybe you could switch up the build for really anybody's guess in anybody's game. But it looks like Zay is going immediately aggressive here once again. Did not quite connect that ankle biter. His HM block is getting immediately broken through the cyclone in order to break out that root as well. But the cat's going to save Kelly QQ from the HMZ and Zay now. Gonna kind of be having a hard time to make a comeback. He did get that free dandelion proc off the ground counter as well. And the hammer will get the tech chase follow up, and no second wind available here anymore for Zay. No HMZ either. He's gonna have a hard time to really catch out his opponent as he's about to kind of burn him down. And he goes straight for the line, you know, trying to get some damage in. Uh, still has flock, not really sure what other big going on. Searing slash into the five point. Doesn't quite get the tech chase, and the boot is that didn't exactly land either. Goes for the knock, and now he's getting his dragon tongue, but interrupted by the cat. He flickers off cooldown. Cyclone's in, goes for the boot again, yet again, but not again, not getting these solid combos. Kelly Q is eating a good amount of damage. Now into the nettles, no defense skills. Free aerial damage. When he's landing, he's probably gonna go for another knockdown. Ah, misses the ankle biter. Alright, so we see right here the Sprout knocking Zay down to the floor. He's stuck at 25% HP. He's dropping dangerously low. He does use that flock of blades to get a bit more aggressive in onto Kelly QQ. And he's doing a lot of damage into here on towards the cat. But now having to play a bit more back, he does not land the lightning rich due to that beckon saving Kelly right there. The Z does stun out his opponent as well. And he manages to land in with the five-point strike. Kelly QQ now down. 26% HP and the shoulder charge will save him from the cat hammer. The dandelion subs. Kelly tabs right out of the cat pounce and Kelly! Oh, and dropped out here. Ooh, that searing slash Ooh. right after the boot <laughs> managed to get him that huge burst of damage nah. and just barely turned it around there at the end. That that was extremely close at the end. All the skills being used in just that little corner. We saw the mm -hmm. nettles, knockdowns. 
the escapes being used, and just just needed that knockdown to Searing Slash. Yeah. I just ever so barely saved him. We saw the HP, you know, on both sides. Both of them less than 10%. And it looked like just anybody's game right there at the end, but he just barely turned it around. Thank goodness he did end up actually getting that uh, KD as well, just because Steering Slash gets bonus damage off of uh, CC target, which is a really big deal. You know, if you want to be getting your maximum potential for damage output, but of course, how low Kelly was, it may not have even mattered. But, you know, in a situation like that, if you're both low and it resets to the neutral, you know that the summoner's going to really heal a lot more than you. So definitely good for him to be able to secure that win. All right, so the score is tied one-to-one. -one. This is determined who gets to stay in the Rumble in the Rumble uh, 4, I believe. So yeah, a lot of pressure for both sides. Yeah, definitely don't want to get knocked out of fourth place, you know. Uh, $50 Hong Moon coin is... Kind of nice too, but you know, I think that $100 in the pocket is uh, a bit more wanted between these players. So we'll see what's going to happen. Of course, you can't always proceed forward to try to earn more in the long run. But here we go, guys. Final round between these two contestants. We'll see who's going to be able to pull it out. Lightning draw is going to be used early on here by Zay as well. And the shoulder shirt to heal back up to full from this initial damage that has come out of Kelly. The true friend will be keeping dust. Fine, right here we do see the HM block get shattered actually on the side of Zayn. He throws his raid right on into that dandelion. Unfortunately, Petal Storm is up in the end. Cyclone is going to get popped here by Zay as well. Trying to keep him as much damage as possible. Flock of Blades is burnt out here by the Cat Pounce and Lightning Retribution thrown onto the Cat. Unfortunately, trying to deal as much damage as he can to the Cat, but it is beckoned back to get safe. Knocked to the floor by the boot, getting some damage in here with the flash up. Kelly down to 50 and HP. The free dandelion proc once again, and the second wind burnt out here by Zay now having to play back and retreat off from his opponent. And Kelly is just gonna kind of storm forward with his damage. We see here Zay is gonna have a really rough time if he gets hit by any of these CCs from the summoner. He's got to re be really careful about this. Hong Moon block. Oh, now he throws Hong Moon Z escape finally even by Kelly. Beckon is probably just gonna do a lot of damage. He gets the sleep off Nettles, Sunflower, Sunflower, Petal Storm. They just trying to get any CC off and it's just not working. Kelly just free damage off. So rough right there. We saw the cat pounce coming right there at the end by Kelly and didn't nearly 80 percent of his opponent's HP through that uh cat pounce into the unconscious. It was absolutely massive. Kelly definitely showing that they played up the matchup well and they will proceed forward meaning Zay sadly is going to have to be taking that fourth place prize but still congratulations for making it so far and on to the official BNS stream. Yeah definitely exciting match uh unfortunate for Zay uh Kelly can oh well now we <laughs> go into our prizes again we have a fourth place prize for Zay he'll get his $50 in a Hong Moon coin and one of the beautiful outfits uh and then for doc mr duke chloroform and kelly qq can actually get an option chance to get the first second or third place right third place being hundred dollar usd one of the outfits and the uh corsair pro usb headset second place getting two hundred dollars usd one of the outfits and the source scimitar great uh mouse with all those beautiful beautiful buttons you got right there and Lastly, first place, $300 USD, your choice of an outfit, and the beautiful Corsair K70 keyboard. Yep, we wouldn't want one of those. Brand new, really nice to have those seen. And out of those three outfits, which one do you like the most? Uh, I'm not, I, I like to go with the classic uh, school days, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Really? That outfit has not been around for quite some time. I think the last time we did see that was over a year ago, at least. I'm pretty sure. I haven't seen that outfit around for quite a while. But personally, I kind of like the teacher's pet outfit. I really like the red with, um, you know, that sort of outfit scheme as well. We call that the uh, gender swap outfit. As <laughs> for the males, they get the skirt and all. <laughs> so kind I mean of funny looking. Maybe perhaps we're just talking about the same outfit. I play a male character. You play a female <laughs> character. <laughs> oh, my. All right. Next, we're going to have uh, Chloroform versus Mr. B. Uh, mm -hmm. Chloroform being on the blue side. Mr. Uh, oh, not Mr. Mr. Dute on the red side. What do you yeah, think of his next? 
FM and the Destroyer matchup. Right, so I hear it time and time again that Destroyers just do not like this matchup. FM is so hard for this class to really do it. They don't have any real way to deal with fan and grip. You know, the only way they can is through an iframe like C or SS. And then just their ember stomp. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They're just like, no, I'm going to pick you up. You're going over to this side of the map. You're going to be on this wall and you're not going to be anywhere near your ember stomp. And it's usually almost a non-factor in some ways. And of course, nobody likes to deal frost orbits. Frost orbits always pretty hard to play around. You know, that's a really big thing that you're going to see here is that he's going to always try to keep his opponent slowed and try to keep them back in as far as possible. But we'll see here if uh, Mr. Dute has any ways to really... Sort of show that he can actually come out on top of this matchup. You know, there are a couple ways to follow up on your opponent as a destroyer instead of just approach skills. So you don't have to worry about frost orbits all too often. You know, you can use things like your axe throw. You can use vacuum too. Really depends on how he wants to do it, of course. FM, since it does have some projectile protection, vacuum could be wanted as well. And of course, we have stuff like axe sweep to really get those follow-ups too. So we'll see uh, what he really does. She's, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see maybe what his shield choice is. What do you think he's gonna maybe want to bring in for stone shield here? I was thinking in his other matches, he usually opts for the iframe shield, but again, he might just change it up just for today. We'll see what happens. All right, well, it looks like they're finally getting underway. Mr. Dew on the red side, Chloroform on the blue side. Both contestants going in, and the ram will be thrown into the ice flower, unfortunately, in that opening. The dragon shark does mount on the side of Chloroform. He's going to just be staying back, playing a bit more safe inside of his divine veils. And right there, we did see he does actually have the iron plating available here. Using that knockback red spin as his next optimal choice as well. He does shut down the ember stomp, and the S is immediately popped here by Chloroform. Now we see the kind of neutral is going to be difficult. He's terrified for the Phantom. It goes straight for the Ram. Still got the Frost Orbit. Hard for him to even get a single tech chase off. See iframe use. Unfortunately, no proc. Using the shield to just stall a little more time. Or from just getting his distance, getting those impacts in. Um, unfortunately, he can even just get off. And there's the Phantom Grip going straight for the wall. He's going to get uh, Ice Frost Orbit have expired. Barbecues him. Goes straight for the stun. And then blue buff is popped. Freezing himself just to stall some time. And we see right here the Frost Prison is broken out of an immediate power slam to knock his opponent to the floor. He actually is using that extra as well. Knock his opponent up into the air, but Chloroform still has so much HP on the table, but it is the same for Mr. Dew over here. We do see that Chloroform does still have two escapes, though. The immediate fan grip out of the iron plating to keep his opponent in the grip there's going to be a lot that he has to really play around here and the ci frame is going to get popped up into the upper as well now playing back the knee is going to connect here for duke we'll see if he's going to be able to follow up though Fine, trying to get a little bit of that chi back but now rooted to the floor having to spin away actually lands a parry will he follow it up he actually goes in with the ram and gets the grab on his opponent here mr duke is going to slowly beat his opponent down Chloroform is a bad situation. No Frost Orb to him. Uses his escapes. Goes for the Ice Heart. Needs to get some Frost Orb, which he does just from a simple RMB. Hits into the Ice Shield. Is he going to just grip him out of it again? Once again, gripped immediately, forcing him to waste his escape. That's a deflect though. This is really good. Ember Stomp. Axe Throw. Tech Chase with the Leg Sweep. Grabs him. Power Slam. And then the SS is you. Mr. Reeve just being in a good situation in terms of HP. Chloroform is in trouble with the blue buff being used. And there it is with the iron cancel. Yeah, really nicely done there right at the end by Duke. You know, he noticed his opponent didn't have an F roll. He caught him out immediately. And then right there, we saw the Wrath and he cancel. It deals so much damage. So really nicely done there by Mr. Duke just to make sure that he gets all this damage potential in. When the opportunity mattered most, he managed to get both escapes out of the Forest Master, which is usually relatively hard to do, you know, against the Forest Master. Do they have them having so many ways to play so safely? They can use things like their uh, Ice Flower or the Frost Prison to really buy and stall for time on those cooldowns. But, you know, against all odds, he still managed to persevere. But, of course, it's not over yet. Yeah, Def, I think uh, in this case, Corvo just might need to play a little more careful. He did get deflected not once, but twice within one match. And mm -hmm. getting a deflect on the shore is very beneficial for them. Removes the chill stacks and reduces the cooldown on Ram. Just, mm -hmm. just saying, I'm going to get punished immediately with a Ram. Yeah, that was the really big thing. You know, we saw Chloro just deflect twice and, you know... Free stuns! Who doesn't like a free stun, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, you're going to want to follow that up. You know, you get their escapes out for cooldowns. You 
really didn't mind burning. You're, you're just spinning there. You're just doing a little bit of cheese. So getting that free stun is really big. Of course, he's going to be able to fall and capitalize on that as much as possible. All right, so it looks like both of the contestants are off and running once again. And the fan grip will be the opener, but Gus just going to be getting Mr. Duke out of that grab as soon as possible. He's going to be trying to use impact to get rid of that, but he does actually end up still getting knocked up. It's knocked back out, but I believe he still does have that Divine Veil buff up. Now probably dropping relatively soon. Stone Shield up and available, and he is going to be dropping that for its Iron Plating. Not trying to strafe around his opponent, trying to get the catch. He does drop the Meteor Shower. Not going to quite get damage, but yet again, another parry. Persistence is used, and Frost Prison popped right here. Quite a dangerous situation. Still has 13 seconds on his escape. Just, he wants to pressure Chloroform, and he is. He's using all of his skills, but the Phantom Rip gets on him. Escape you. Chloroform still good with his tab escape up. Just grabbing him. Power Slam. No tech chase. It failed by the Axe Leaf. Frost Tornado landed. He has to hide in this Iron Plane. Is he going to get gripped out of it immediately? Pops to the red pin. Gets into the Ember Storm. Gets a free damage right here. But Chloro using his tab. Doesn't get the see because on Ember Spin. Uh, this C I frame used. Doesn't proc. And now Mr. B has to go for a retreat. Yeah, right here we see Mr. B trying to run away. He doesn't have any more escapes. He does have that Gust coming up in just a short while, actually gonna just pop it immediately in Chloroform. On the other hand, now has that backstep available once again, but he's just gonna be getting out for free virtually here. And Mr. B now trying to get that re-engage, goes for the power slam and actually ends up getting hit by the impact out of the grab. Fortunately, the Frost Prison's gonna be healing him right back up once again. Blue buff was exhausted as well, and Tab Escape still available here for Chloroform. Phantom Grip! He's looking really dangerous here. He's trying to stay up and out of range. Going back in against the Ice Flower with the Ram for that iframe. The Red Spin to avoid incoming CC possibilities and that Iron Plating to save him from the Meteor Shower. Now stuck by that Grip though. The Gust coming back up just in time to save him right out of that. And the Ember Stomp is down. Grip not being available means he can just stay on here. And he doesn't have to really worry about CCs quite yet. And does manage to get the grab. Back in onto his opponent. Chloroform sought half HP though. Both escapes available. Ends up choosing the tab immediately. Divine Veil put up onto the field. Iron Plating dropped down once again. Now trying to chase his opponent forward. Misses the Phantom Grip onto the SS. The upper not going to connect here for Mr. B, unfortunately. But the straight around his opponent Chloroform just trying to play safe once again. Buying time for that type of escape. Cooldown slowly chipping away at his opponent. And unfortunately, I don't think Mr. B has done more damage here. No, I don't think he does either. And it's especially dangerous at that HP. Chloroform can probably just get a Phantom Grip, see if he can just chop off some more damage. He's just getting as much damage as through the time. Goes straight for the Red Spin. Gets his Tech Chase. Escape used. But Chloroform just doesn't care. He knows he has more damage. He's just going to wait out the timer at this rate. Both, both of his escape, Phantom Grip. Moving on. And now we're going to go into Gen. All right, so yeah, right here we did see right at the end. Chloroform just kind of stalling for that clock, really trying to buy as much time on that three, maybe counter as we predicted. It was Chloroform coming out on top with his damage. And honestly, it wasn't a whole lot of damage dealt from either side. You know, of course, it was enough to probably kill either one of them, except for Chloroform probably, uh, obviously, doing a bit more over that. But to a destroy, it is a pretty tanky class. You know, heals up quite a bit with things like that Stone Shield as well. But yeah, Coral really knowing that he can't have that out. He plays it really nice and slow and patient in order to kind of wait out for the destroyer to burn their cooldowns. Just because, again, they have such a difficult time to really engage against their opponent. Yeah, definitely. Chloroform showing that he wanted to play much more safe last time. Probably learned his lesson. Only hit one deflect this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, definitely a lot safer on Chloro's side. Maybe a bit uh, frustrating on the Destroyer side. Again, he has to opt for his Stone Shield. He has to opt for the knockback red spin for the charge mm -hmm. disable. So he's not given that many options for like really heavy stun CCs. Yeah. So that's the really big thing, you know, it, it's kind of difficult to really get back in. He's trying to play around that and we really need to see him get another big damage burst as he did in that first round, right? And of course, I, I think the blue buffs were a bit off at some points, you know, we saw them get used and then Chlor just gets out, immediately pops the ice thing. You can't really abuse all of that uh, damage boost that you really get out of it. So 
Here we go once again, both contestants off and running for their start. That Ice Flower will be the initial opener once again here for Chloroform. Now waiting and playing back. He's going to be using that SS to try to buy himself some more time, but the upper will be coming out of Mr. B in order to try to get more damage. And he actually ends that Frost Burst instantly, and the Neat gets the connection. Tab escape not going to affect Mr. B here due to that Ember Stump being up and available. Knocking him back here with the Red Spin as well into the vacuum, trying to get as much damage. And we see right there with that Wrath just stealing quite a bit onto Chloroform. Both classes still having both of her escapes, so it's uh, pretty even. Damage side more on to Mr. B. Then he gets knocked out of a stone shield. Blue buff already used. Chloroform is just going to hide in his ice tab, you know, stall it for his own cooldowns. Mr. B is kind of dangerous, but he probably will have his tab escape up in time. Tries to get his CI frame, tries to get the ram. Chloroform just kind of dancing around. Even the spin that's worked with the upward does catch. Catch with the axe sweep. Oh, and un unfortunately, the blitz timing is just a little off. Has to offer the escape on the Phantom Grip, but luckily still has his Ember Stomp. Phantom Grip's gone. Mr. Beast, yeah, relatively safe. It gets a deflect. Unfortunately, the Ice Sheath will prevent that. Knockback on the Red Spin gets his charges back. CI frame used. Unfortunately, unable to punish off the Frost Burst. And we see here the Frost Burst not really doing a whole lot there for Chloroform though either, but he does manage to land out the Glacial Beam here. Mr. Dude don't, doesn't have any escape, so this could very well be the end here. He does end up going for the Aerial Combo the Dual Dragons, dealing out massive amounts of damage, pushing him up against the wall, making sure to get all of that damage in, and Chloroform takes the 2-1 victory over Mr. B, knocking him down to the loser's bracket. Uh, very unfortunate. Things felt very even at the middle. I think one turning point was uh, Mr. Dude just did not manage his cooldown as well. At one point, he escaped out of the Phantom Grip, had an Ember Stomp. So that's really good because once you have Ember Stomp and Phantom Grip's gone, Destroyer, yeah. you have free reign. But unfortunately, he uses his Stone Shield iframe at the same time, using two of his greatest mm -hmm. neutrals and just giving uh, Chloroform just free reign over the next few seconds. Yeah, you know, that's just typically how it goes. It's really unfortunate that it had to play out that like that for him, but what can you do? Of course, now he does still have another chance in the tournament. If we go ahead and look over toward that bracket, we still have Kelly QQ up against Mr. Dew once again. You think Kelly can keep turning around this time? I hope so. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I'm rooting for him. He's the underdog. Um, well, in this case, anyways. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Again, I mean, we've seen uh, the first round. It was very one-sided. Mr. G just getting all of his CCs down mm -hmm. pretty well. Uh, Kelly QQ just, he, he has to play a lot better than before. He has to be able to oh, get yeah. his spells, get his roots, get his spin disables, get his knockdown. It's a very, very difficult thing. Essentially, he has to do everything right. Yeah. It's really big having to play against the Destroyer as that Summoner class. But, you know, in that second round last time we saw him, he actually did do a pretty fair job, which was kind of nice for him. Um, you know, he did a really reasonable amount of damage, Mr. B, dropping all the way down to 9% HP, which is absolutely massive. So he could have had that comeback potential. And so we'll see if he's able to kind of turn it around here before he gets knocked out to that third place spot. Yeah, definitely. I think the big thing, again, it's, it's kind of a small thing, but it does turn around. Just the red spin from Destroyer, if he sees that Kelly has used his true friend, has used his SS, there's no escape for Summoner. It will not be able, they will not be able to get out of it unless they, of course, use their actual escape. And Mr. Dude is just, for him, I guess, in his mind, he just think, all right, they use this, you use this, you use this. All right, red spin, and it, I'm good. I probably will secure yeah. the win. That's the really big thing is that the, it seems like a flow chart almost for Destroyer in some ways, you know, they're kind of just slowly progressing out their plays. And if the Summoner can't find the ways to really break that flow of action, they have such a difficult time to really come back because their healing doesn't really do a whole lot for them when they get chunked out within the first minute of the game. Yeah, definitely. The heal is unfortunate for uh, Summer in this case. And mm -hmm. Destroyers, even they, they don't even opt for healing. They don't use the... At least Mr. Uh, Dude does not want the iframe stone shield. He does not want... He does not need the iframe stone shield. He wants CC. He wants to be able to be aggressive and offensive in this matchup. Yeah. So that's the really big thing to be looking forward to. And it looks like they are both finally ready. Go ahead and take it, my friend. Mr. B is actually opting for the red buff. Let's see if Kelly QQ can respond appropriately. 
Goes straight for the Blitz and the Beckon. Actually, iframe the knockdown. Have escape used for mystery. This is actually very bad if Kelly Q can notice the Red Buff popped on the Trooper and gives no, Ember Stomp use. Mr. B is in a bad situation. Probably his strongest tool now is just the red spin. Oh, and he gets into the stair. No spin. His stone shoot just get power pants. This could be it. Kelly Hughes is just gonna get massive damage off the power pants. Red spin finally being used, but it hits into the party dandelion. And Kelly's just gonna walk away for a bit. Goes over to the stairs. Knock down again. Uses that to get more stealth. Hits into the C fire and fail tech chase. But Mr. B is just not able to punish on this. He uses his tap skip twice. Already. Finally, Kelly Hugh opts for his escape, but he knows he can just punch right here with the five hole and a finish with the power bounce. Really clean play out there from Kelly QQ. This time around, we see Mr. B running with that fury as well instead of the persistence. You know, blue buff versus red. He decided to swap it up, try to maybe catch out his opponent. But right there, we see Kelly playing so well in order to turn the matchup on its head. So we'll see. If Kelly is going to be able to steal back up to that sec at least that second place spot here, I mean, what do you think, Mr. B? Really needs to switch up since he seems a little more off than he uh, did in his first match. I think I think step one, he might, and this is going to sound kind of obvious. He might need to go back to the blue buff. <laughs> <laughs> Just underestimating Kelly QQ's uh, ability to CC. Mm -hmm. um, Kelly QQ's favorite thing it seems to be just hit into ground counter. Get that free stealth and just punish mm -hmm. off it. Destroy having one of the worst ground counters. Not only is it slow, but because of the anti lock, it's very easy to CC right afterwards. Yeah. It's Kelly Q is probably just betting on it. His knockdowns are his friends in this case. Yeah, definitely really like that. That's a really big thing to kind of see is that I really like how he plays around the ground counter of his opponent. You know, he's always making sure to proc those ground counters intentionally so he can get free dandelion procs and use something like an ankle biter to knock them down or thorn strike or hammer to follow up to get them to roll, etc. So that's a really big thing that he kind of takes advantage of and makes sure that he gets as much of iframe time and sunflower damage as possible. All right, well, we'll see here if Mr. B can manage to turn it around. He goes immediately for the leap. Sucking in both contestants. We did see the immediate tab escape out of Kelly Kiku as well. Power Pounce will go in onto Mr. B and Blue plus Gust are already both popped. Here we see him on the Ember Sun, but Kelly Kiku just going right to the other side of the arena. They know that they are in a dangerous situation. He is hit here by the knee, and he has to be really careful of that red spin from Mr. B. The hammer not going to be able to save him this time around. We pulled back in by the vacuum, refusing to use that F roll, and he's stuck here. Gets out, gets the SS running from the red spin for dear life, has the party dandelion, and gets the proc. Kelly QQ now to 21% HP, but caught out once again, stuck by Mr. B. Gets knocked out by the Thorn Strike, and the Cat Pounce going back in onto Mr. Do, dealing massive amounts of damage with the Tab Escape. We'll just barely save him out here. Kelly now able to play back, gets the hammer off, not quite gonna land the Thorn Strike, but Mr. B dropping down real low, real fast, 8% HP, 4%, and Mr. B oh. is knocked down to the floor by Kelly QQ, knocking him to that third place seat, and Kelly turns it on his head and manages to get the revenge play. Uh, you can just hear the cheers of the cats and the crying of the destroyers at this match. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, oh my. Quite an interesting start for uh, Mr. B. He's using, he uses blue immediately, aggressively, which is quite oh, the yeah. opposite for what you would normally think you would use with it. Yeah, you know, the blue buff is usually is for the safe prediction, but I think the really big thing was that he maybe wanted it to fight out with the iframe so the summoner can't break it out all too easily. You know, something like the red buff can get KD'd right off the bat. There is the choice of blue for that, but I doubt that's the one he was running. He's probably running the five tick blue instead. And so with that, that means Mr. Duke will be claiming that bronze trophy right on down there, getting the third place. We can bring up those prizes once again so we can show what our lovely final two contestants are also competing for. So earlier today, we had Zay get that $50 in Hong Moon coin with his choice of outfit. Third place right here for Mr. Duke. He's getting 100 USD and the choice of one of those lovely outfits along with the Corsair Void Pro RGB headset. Really nice. But then right here, Chloron Kelly claiming out for the big prizes. We have 200 USD in second with the outfit with the Corsair Scimitar Pro RGB Optical Gaming Mouse with a really nice looking mouse pad. Thing looks like it would fit my entire desk practically. And then for first place, we have 300 USD with outfit choice and the Corsair K70.
So right here, finals, Chloroform versus Kelly, Summoner versus FM. What do you think really happens in this kind of matchup? Uh, this can go either way. It depends on more of the players, I think. A lot, I hear a lot of summoners complain about, complain about Force Masters, you know, with the grips, the uh, frost orbits, mm -hmm. uh, the cat, obviously. Yep. And then I hear a lot of uh, Force Masters complain about summoner, you know, the constant damage, the, um, the cat also getting in their way of their CCs. And oh, yeah. I don't know, it can go either way. It depends on how they play. Uh, it's going to be really big to see how they choose to kind of play it out. And of course, there's going to be healing across the map all the time. There's going to be so much projectile defense. Some stuff is probably going to be thrown into it. Frost Prison, natural healing for things like Kazaa out of the summoner. There's going to be a lot of cooldowns that they're going to have to be playing around. But just a brief reminder too, guys. So since this is our grand finals, how this is going to be playing out it's going to be a best of three matches what a match implies is what we've been watching this whole time so basically best two out of three two out of three times you can understand that so that's going to be how it's going to get played out here and that's what it's going to be and there will not be a winner's side advantage so it's going to be right from the get-go who's going to be able to come out on top in these first initial games so uh, what do you think, Gummy? Do you have a preference in terms of who do you think is going to win for this? Uh, I don't really like to take sides all too often, but I, if you're kind of looking at it from a statistical standpoint, I'd probably say it is somewhat in the FM favor. Uh, I, I think it's going to have kind of a hard time. You know, if the summary is cut out, no SS, they're rooted to the floor. Meteor Shower is going to deal some insane amounts of damage, so they always have to be really careful with the safe cooldown that they are trying to burn and of course fm has a lot of ways to really deal with projectiles you know the double ice is super nice on top of the vine veil and of course impact it blocks projectiles itself too <laughs> so there's there's a lot of ways to really kind of burn through that so we'll see if kelly's going to be on their a game to really uh swap it around yeah, I think especially uh, with Chloro's uh, playstyle, you see him when he's at his best, he will go for the safe damage. And that that essentially will turn things around against the Summoner. The Summoner wants the Force Pass to be more aggressive, wants yeah. him to be a little bit more reckless, just that little opening for the cat to just just behind them, just a uh, cat hammer or the five point. But Chloro, yeah. he usually opts for the safe damage. You're going to chunk it little by little. You can't you can't expect like the long aerial combos you would see mm -hmm. if the Force Master was finding him. Uh, it looks like our match is finally underway, though. But this is the EU 1v1 Rumble in the Realm 4 Finals. Guys, give your energy and who you want to come out on top and win this match. So right here, we do see Chloroform opening up with that Divine Veil. Briar Patch on the floor here for Kelly QQ as well. Impact to shove away the Cap of Doom and Bloom slowly ticking away out of Knox on the floor. Cap Pounce is going to be able to get that aggressive play. And the time escape is burnt out here by Chloro. The fan gonna get popped here as well. An ankle biter for the follow-up pick and calling back his cat. Trying to play safe, but is gonna get knocked back here by the impact sun twice and right up against the wall. Dual dragons into the phantom grip as well. Not trying to play a little more aggressive. Kelly down to 74% HP, but of course, as the summoner, he's gonna be able to kill that up quite nice and stuck here by the power pounds. Gets hit by the unconscious as well. But Kelly actually losing the targeting there over that ice route, unfortunately. I hear the pet slash is not going to quite get him that aerial connection. SS will save him right out of that route. Beckoning back, trying to play as safe as possible. Waiting up in that pedal storm and the fan grip missing here for Cloro. Cloro's not in a very good way. He doesn't have his phantom grip. He doesn't have as much. He's using his blade ring and just gets dazed there. All of his escapes are used. It's very bad. One cap and could do it for him. Uh, goes for the knockdown. Fails the tech chase, but gets the daze into the aerial. Just going to get those... Three left clicks in. Goes for the five point. Here's the big damage. Oh, and Clark just slides a little bit out of there. Gets his roots in. Gets for the damage. Grabs an escape used on Kelly's side and hiding in his battle again. He knows he can just stay in there. Just pretty safe. Uh, Cat's being chilled, so he can't really use all of his skills. And uh, Clark just skipping away. His HP is just dropping down. The DOT, Boom and Bloom's going there. Nettles in there. Kelly from just throwing his inferno it's almost out of desperation and the meteor actually chunks the rest of his damage yeah it was absolutely insane we saw the inferno to dual dragons to meteor shower and we saw kelly's kiki go from half to just absolutely nothing just burning him out almost 
instantly right there. So really nicely done there from Chlorophorn to get that first win on the board. But of course, the second win will claim a single match set. So that's going to be the really big thing to be hopefully looking for. He wants to try to make sure that he gets that finish. You really want to be able to clean it out because if you end up dropping it, you drop the round, then it's still anybody's game. No one's claimed the first match. So he has to make sure that he keeps it nice and secured. Yeah, and we also know it's Chloroform running very summoner specific builds here. He's not using ice builds, he's using fire. He's opting for the blazing deep beam. He wants that small impact damage. He wants the chunking damage. He doesn't use the uh, frost burst. He uses the uh, the root. He wants to get this long range chill. Just have him in place, just lets him get free damage. Mm -hmm. And we saw at the end, it was not CC. That was Meteor, Inferno, and uh, Dual Dragon. Just used just straight without any sort of CC. Yeah, that's the really big thing. And we saw too, you know, during the matchup, it was really hard for them to try to close out a win as well. It was because so much damage was being dealt, but then a lot of healing was coming back too. So right there at the end, when we do see those big bursts, they know when the time is to answer out to all of that time. All righty, so here we go into the second round for this first match. We'll see who's going to be able to take the win. If Colfron's going to just clean it up 2-0 to pull ahead in his victory. If Kelly's going to be able to turn this on its head. Penta slash will force out the backstep immediately from Kelly in that area. I'm not going to be doing a whole lot there for him either. Back thing back his opponent here. He's getting that roll, but the hammer not going to get the connection that he was looking for. Kelly just pulling up ever so slowly just because that pedal storm is out and healing him from all of that damage. Tab escape is going to get burnt after that fan grip as well. And just beckoning back the cat, trying to keep it safe and alive, making sure it's not going to be rooted and frosted. Out on the cat, trying to get in on the return. Does land the hammer, but no aerial here, unfortunately. Well, it's going to keep Clara just safe, but no escapes available for the current moment. Trying to play back and safe, and the Pencil Slash not going to be able to get in due to the impact deflecting back his opponent. Briar Patch down on the field. Cat just curled off to the side. Kelly waiting to play it out a little more slow. The Glacial Beam does get the connection, dealing damage onto both targets here, actually, with that Dual Dragon and Frost Prison. Healing Floor from right back up to full HP. Now, Kelly trying to get back in, but dropping so low, and it's looking really grim here, but it does manage to land out one Power Pound side for that Ankle Biter. Gets gripped out, but the backstep will be keeping him alive, but no escapes here anymore. Chloroform has the upper hand here with that backstep available still, but she needs to put it back with the impact as well. Not going to be able to get that Penta Slash aerial for his side. Trying to play as safe as possible, dealing damage where it is needed. And Kelly down to 23, 19% HP, 12, and 4, and 0 from the Dual Dragons. Alrighty, so really nicely done out there by Chloroform to be able to get that last initial chunk. So he claims the first match win. So that means he has a lead over his opponent. So one more match victory and he will claim first place for Rumble in the realm. What do you think Kelly needs to do to turn this around? Uh, it's really hard to say. I think the uh, cat management could be a little more different. If you notice, Chloro is using the cat to make distance. Just impact the cat, you're going to move back a few meters. Get Throw some chill on the cat, you're forcing the summoner into a very bad position. Mm -hmm. And then he's, again, you mentioned before, he has to watch his SS. If not, the meteor is just going to chunk him or free. He doesn't have party Danny line, doesn't have SS, doesn't have true friend. The meteor's damage will accumulate and it will hurt. Mm -hmm. That's the really big thing. You have to really kind of be careful about all of this because it takes so much damage. You know, being a squishy class like the summer, the Force Master does have a reasonable amount of burst. Well, it's like Dual Dragons, Meteor Shower, Inferno, obviously, especially if they have those fire stacks up and available and running. So we'll see if they're going to be able to kind of pull it off, turn it around. He really wants to see if he can get that initial opener. Hopefully, the Power Pounce is going to be able to do a little more work in these next coming games. So is your favorite still going to win it? <laughs> it's looking pretty grim, huh? But uh, I mean, he he beat uh, he beat his destroyer matchup. He probably has a chance now. Yeah. Turn around. Arguably the harder matchup for him here. So yeah. hopefully he's uh, arguably gonna be able to beat this one this time around. I think uh, he's also gotta be careful with the uh, cat launches. He was pretty aggressive with them, but also misses yeah. them either due to the force master predicting and just using his escape, or just 
not expecting his own CC to go off and not pressing that cat launch button fast enough. Yeah, that was a really big thing. A lot of the time we kind of saw that the cat launch was just going off and, you know, Cloro would just kind of roll out of it. That was a really big thing. You know, we saw the hammer, we saw the thorn strike, and then he just rolls it instead, getting the instant aerial, which is really unfortunate. Same thing with the penna slash, you know. He's using it, kind of missing, and it gets thrown into stuff like Impact, which is really unfortunate there for him. So hopefully it's not going to happen all too often to him this time. Go ahead and take it away, Hank. All right, we're going Chloroform, Kill Q, match. Kill Q can turn this around after getting 2 0'd. Chloroform just going for get his early kills that Divine Villain just hides in his little sheath. Uh, Kill Q just trying to get that. He uses his back and doesn't quite land it. Five point already wasted with an SS and an impact. Chloroform's in a good position right now. Gets his in laser stun onto him. Infernal proc off. He's being slept, but you know, there's no targeting available for Kelly Q. Q. Trying to just think, what am I going to do? SS2. Two fan use. Chloroform just going to run away. The Nettles is also used. And he just, you know, hiding away. And he grabs Kelly Q. Q. Kelly Q uses his escapes. This is pretty bad. Chloroform has almost everything up again, minus the SS. He's gonna freeze up, he's gonna get the bail, and now he's just gonna land his nice PvE damage. And Kill Q opting for the SS out of the meteor gets rooted again, and Chloroform finally uses escape, and he's just gonna get that end damage. Oh my goodness, it's looking really good and great here for Chloroform as he gets the next round win. And Kelly just having such a hard time to really get back and deal more damage, you know. It's just so difficult for him to find any engages. Chloroform's playing such a solid neutral, and he's always getting all the optimal amounts of damage that he can. We see him throwing in a lot of Inferno. We see him throwing in a lot of uh, LMBs for the you know fire stacks as well to make sure that they deal as much damage as possible. So that's going to be kind of hard, you know, for them to really make a comeback just with Chloroform dealing so much damage. Making sure that sustain on Kelly QQ really isn't going to be helping out at all. Especially chloroform, he's getting his uh, he's getting his value out of that. Uh, I don't remember the exact move, but instead of frost burst, it's the yeah, frost burst. Uh, is this frost burst? Okay, so the other tree is frost burst, where he just gets that long range root. He can use it in the opener, just disable the targeting of mm -hmm. um, Kelly Q. He's just having so much difficulty getting value out of his combo. Chloroform, he just throw in the neutral, kind of just he walks around him. It's very very hard to deal with that. Yeah, it's kind of hard to deal with and the big thing is here too that we have to remember this is the final match this is grand finals so chloroform he's one win away from claiming first place kelly's got to wake up you know he's kind of he's sleeping at the keyboard right now so exactly. we really hope that we can kind of see him turn it around maybe take at least a round or two and hopefully it doesn't go out it goes out with a bang instead of a whimper so let's see it right here kelly qp is going to be able to turn it around and make sure he can fight for this first place prize. Right now, for the initial opener, we see the fan grip coming out from his opponent's side. The stun coming down from Chloroform. We're not going to quite be able to get a fall, but he does manage to land the aerial, land some nice dual dragons damage. Not even going to go for the relaunch. He's just opting to drop his opponent out instead. We see right here Kelly just dropping so low, so fast, and the meteor shower ends it instantly right here. Kelly QQ, no dandelion, no SS, no ways of escape. He is stuck, and Chloroform takes the first place victory here in EU. Uh, congratulations to Chloroform. Uh, well played, Kelly UQ. Maybe next time. That was uh, that was tough. <laughs> right there, we saw Chloroform was like, I'm ready to bust out the moves. Instantly goes for the win, takes it out. What was that? It was like a 30-second match, if even that. Yes, That's really really the aerial combo. I remember saying he probably won't, and he did. He was just like, all right, I'm just throw this in there. Mm -hmm. Knows the cat is going to get rooted. Just opts in for that damage. That was absolutely insane. We saw so fast and how quickly that Chloroform really can't dish out that damage. He just went for the immediate burst potential. He saw Kelly QQ on the back foot, burned all of his safety cooldown so early on and managed to finish him off. So really good job out there by Chloroform. Nice, big, shiny looking gold trophy over there claiming that first place prize for himself. But Kelly QQ does also claim second, Mr. Dude at third and Zay down there at fourth place. So thank you to all of our contestants for performing out here and giving us some very nice matches. But with that, that means it's bringing us to the end of the Rumble in the Realm European 1v1 final. So thank you all to the viewers 
for sticking and tuning in. But don't forget, later on today, we have NA action. Around 4 p.m. PST, that would be 4 p.m. EST, we have NA Rumble in the Realm Finals. So look forward to those. We'll also be on the BNS stream right here. And then don't forget about the 3v3 qualifiers held on December 2nd and 3rd. Finals on the 4th. Teams are already registering, and I don't quite remember if registration has been closed yet. I believe it is still open, so look forward to that. And if you want to play yourself, feel free to always sign up. And I'll, of course, large thank yous over to the players, Legion or Esports, the broadcast team, and, of course, you, the viewers, for supporting here at this scene. And don't forget about the Blade and Soul Dawn of the Lost Continent patch preview part two on November 30th at 10 a.m. PST. And of course, you can get your nice Explorers Pack free level 50 boost, which is usually around, I believe, 50 USD in value. So you definitely want to claim that for yourself. Free character, make that all. You definitely want to have that. And don't forget to follow Blade and Soul on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. YouTube video for Rumble in the Realm 4 will be up on the Blade and Soul YouTube channel as well. So if you miss any of the action or you want to show it to your friends, make sure to send them that way. But thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm Gummy. Thanks Mommy. for sitting here with me, Hank. And we will see you all next time. Bye-bye. And have a good day, friends.